Welcome to PatsCast, I'm Brad Whitaker. Over the last week or so, it has seemed increasingly likely that the New England Patriots will select North Carolina quarterback Drake May at third overall, making him their potential next franchise quarterback. However, in the last 24 hours, a quote came out that really gives me pause thinking that that may not actually happen. But let's back up a little bit to see why Drake May seems to be somewhat inevitable for the Patriots. And I'll also talk about why what came out from Gerard Mayo over the last 24 hours shows maybe that won't be happening. But first off, when it comes to the number two pick, which goes to the Washington Commanders, it seems like they're going to take LSU's Jaden Daniels. Um, Sports Illustrated's Albert Breer said on Thursday, the more I've started to ask around, the more it seems like Jaden Daniels is probably the leader in the clubhouse to be a commander. He went on to add, it does match up with what Commander's Offensive Coordinator Cliff Kingsbury has looked for in his quarterbacks over the years. Obviously, Jaden Daniels had a great season last season at LSU, and he's arguably the most ready to play of the three top-tier quarterbacks at the top of the draft because he's played the most football. He played five years in college. Now, I don't necessarily agree with this notion that Jaden Daniels is the most NFL-ready, but I'll get to that. In just a moment. But let's assume Albert Breer here is right. The, the Washington Commanders have been filling out space. All indicators seem like Jane Daniels is the guy they want to go with at number two, which would leave the Patriots with Drake May at number three overall. Now, being presumably the number two quarterback in this year's draft for the last 18 months, May has basically been ripped apart over the last three months, which if you're elevated that much, in all likelihood, the only way direction you have to go is down, and that really has been what's happening with Drake May. We've heard his draft stock is supposedly plummeting. Some people think the Patriots shouldn't take him at third overall. That said, May has started to gain some positive press over the last week just because he has been ripped apart and because Jane Daniels played incredibly well at the end of this past college season well enough to win himself the Heisman Trophy. Go back and check out Friday's Pat's Cast episode uh, where I broke this down a little bit more about how Drake May seems to be getting a lot of positive press, particularly from like Joel Klatt and the Phil Perrys of the world who really want to take him and, and think he is actually the best guy. Uh, Joel Klatt actually said the commanders should take him at second overall, although that seems less likely the more the days go by. Now, the the thing about Drake May is he is the highest upside quarterback in this draft, and the Pats are rebuilding. So upside makes a lot more sense relative to Daniels. If you have a guy who's a lot more raw, you're not expecting the Patriots to be a contender this year by any means. So that would mean Drake May perhaps sits for a little while and has some time to develop. Uh, or, you know, you throw him out there and let him develop that way in the same way like a raw quarterback like Josh Allen was. Um, who really took a couple of years to develop into the MVP caliber quarterback that he is right now. But I do kind of disagree with this take that if you want a guy who's going to contribute right away, Jaden Daniels is that guy. Um, I get May's mechanical issues. His footwork isn't great. Um, has kind of a long wind up for his throw. Looked a little bit like Justin Herbert when he came out of Oregon. Maybe even takes a little longer to throw the football than Herbert did. But look, Drake May played with a lot less at North Carolina than any of these top quarterbacks, even the second-tier quarterbacks in this year's NFL draft, maybe with exception to Spencer Radler. You know, had a pretty good receiver who's probably the Walker kid who's probably going to go in like the third or fourth round. Had an okay tight end, but that was really about it for his weapons, and he had no offensive line in front of him, by far a worse offensive line than Jaden Daniels had at LSU. And although Caleb Williams didn't have the best of the line, certainly was better than what Drake May dealt with at North Carolina. And from the tape that I've at least watched, and many disagree with me on this, Drake May is a guy that does go through the progressions. He makes second and third reads, which is kind of the highest learning curve for NFL quarterbacks. Whereas Jaden Daniels, the more I watch of him, he makes one read, either makes the throw or bails on the play and scrambles and then gains yards that way. And, and that's good for, for an NFL rebuilding team, especially like the Patriots who, who don't have the best offensive line at the moment. You want a guy who can scramble by time or be able to gain yards on the ground. And certainly Jane Daniels has the speed to do that. But 
Drake May also, even if he's not quite as fast as Daniels, he can still run downfield. He can still extend plays. He throws on the run a lot more than Daniels do, does, who when he gets out of the pocket, Daniels, it's almost a guarantee he's going to run downfield. Drake May really creates time in the pocket, scrambles, and then is able to throw receivers open, probably better than any other quarterback, maybe with exception to Caleb Williams in this draft and doing that. But look, I'm just going to say, a quote came out from Gerard Mayo today that gives me some pause over the Patriots actually selecting Drake May or Jaden Daniels if he falls to number three. Um, May was asked by NFL Network about if the Patriots are going to draft a QB at third overall, and he said, it's the priority right now, comma. But with that being said, you have to really be in love with the guy to take him at number three. So really, all the options are still open for us. Well, if they're going to take Drake May, they have to fall in love with the guy. And there are some red flags there, which I've mentioned many times. And you have to note that Gerard Mayo said this quote coming off of Michigan's Pro Day, where the Patriots had a massive presence on Friday. Not only was Gerard Mayo there, their de facto GM, Elliot Wolf, was in attendance as well. Offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt and quarterbacks coach T.C. McCartney were all in Ann, Har Ann Arbor on Friday to watch J.J. McCarthy and some of the other players that are going to be drafted out of Michigan. And J.J. McCarthy had a very strong showing. Now, take that with a grain of salt. Pro days are designed to elevate the college players and show their best skills. But J.J. McCarthy really didn't mess up anything. He was great at um, snapping the ball under center, doing play action, the deep bombs downfield. Go on X, watch some of the highlights. McCarthy looked really good. And maybe, you know, Gerard Mayo was talking about falling in love with the quarterback. I'm not saying the Patriots did, but maybe they came out of that saying, hey, we love this guy. And go watch some of my past podcasts over the last couple of weeks. I've talked about J.J. McCarthy a lot more, whose draft stock really seems to be rising. Yes, does he have the raw size and frame or mobility or skills that a Jaden Daniels or a Drake May has? No, not exactly. But is he the most clutch quarterback in this draft? Yeah, I think he is. Is he a guy that's shown that when push comes to shove, can he put the team on his back and make big plays on third and long in the final minutes of the fourth quarter or in overtime and win them the game? Yeah, compared to all the other quarterbacks in this draft, he has a better record at doing that than even Caleb Williams, than even Jaden Daniels, who won the Heisman, and certainly Drake May, who really beat up on a lot of bad teams and lost to some okay teams in the ACC. So when you keep that in mind, yes, I know J.J. McCarthy at Michigan had the best offensive line in front of him of all these quarterbacks had a great running back, didn't have the best weapons, but he had Roman Wilson. He had some guys he could throw the ball to. He had a decent tight end. But when it came time for J.J. McCarthy to make big throws, particularly on third and long, and I broke this down a little bit this past week on clutch situations, plays of third and five or longer, fourth and five or longer, when he has to throw it beyond the sticks, not just dinking and dumping it and then gaining the yards that way, J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in the draft in those categories. So this is a tough decision for the Patriots to make because maybe Jaden Daniels isn't available at number three overall and they fall in love with him, so they can't grab him. And then you have Drake May. Maybe they're not in love with him. They like that he's raw, he's got size, he is a little bit mobile, um, has probably the first or second strongest arm in this entire draft. You know, can throw off his back foot, unlike Mac Jones, can throw off balance better than most of these quarterbacks. But there are a lot of red flags there. And if you're looking for a guy that you know you're going to be able to rely on when adversity hits, that has that moxie, that chutzpah, if you will, J.J. McCarthy may be that guy. And this is an opportunity here for the Patriots as well, because they have three major needs this draft that they need to address. And they can really only do it in three rounds. And you're only going to get starters, perhaps, in the first two rounds. Yeah, you can get a starter in the third round, but is he going to be a guy that's going to move the needle? Probably not. They have to address quarterback. 
they have to address left tackle because right now Okorafor is there, but he's a role guy. And you don't feel terrible if he's at left tackle week one. Like, you know, he may be somewhat reliable, better than what the Patriots dealt with at that position at the start of this past season. But you really want a franchise piece there at left tackle. And if you're taking a quarterback at third overall, you really have to spend that 34th pick if you want a starting left tackle, which may be available because this is such a deep tackle draft, but then you're deprioritizing the receiver position, and then you got to hope to hit in the third, fourth, or fifth round on a number one wide receiver, which becomes less and less likely. So if you like J.J. McCarthy and you aren't falling in love with Drake May, there's a good chance that J.J. McCarthy is going to be a top 10 guy this year. I'd say right now he probably gets drafted somewhere in the top eight. The Patriots could have an opportunity to trade back from number three to somewhere around five, six, or seven. I, I don't have the teams there at the top of my head, but maybe one of those teams is looking for a quarterback, and they do really like Drake May. I mean, you look at the New York Giants, right? They still have Daniel Jones, who they're not very excited about, right? They signed him to a long-term contract, paying him a lot of money, but he's been very injury-prone. Maybe this is a situation where they go, we really like Drake May's raw talent. We still have Daniel Jones. Why not trade up to number three, take Drake May. We got Daniel Jones starting. He can sit, he can learn, and then he's our quarterback of the future. And then the Patriots, who potentially are not as high on Drake May. Look, this is a hypothetical. Maybe they do fall in love with Drake May. Maybe all of this doesn't matter. But if that is in, case, in fact the case, and the Patriots like J.J. McCarthy more than they like Drake May, they fall in love with McCarthy, not May, then they say, hey, maybe we could get the Giants second rounder or one of these other teams in the top six or seven. And then we can still take J.J. McCarthy, who will likely be on the board at that point. Then you're in a situation where you still get your quarterback that you love, J.J. McCarthy, potentially, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but let's say they fell in love with him on Friday. You still can get McCarthy at five, six, seven, or eight, wherever you trade back. You get a second rounder this year because that's probably going to be the price for trading up to number three, maybe even more than that. And then you have two second round picks. You have the 34th overall pick and another early second round pick. And then you still got the early third round pick going on later. Then you have the opportunity to take one of the better tackles in the second round and one of the better receivers in the second round. So you could get Xavier Leggett and then one of the tackles that falls to the second round who could start at left tackle on day one, like um, Tyler Guyton. Maybe he falls to the second round, maybe not. Maybe Patrick Paul. He might be a guy that goes a little later. There's a lot of guys there that you could insert. I don't have all the names at the top of my head. But again, this is a very deep tackle draft. And a few of those guys are going to be ready to start on the left side in week one. I'm not saying this is what the Patriots will do, but J.J. McCarthy impressed a lot of people at Michigan's Pro Day. And Patriots had everyone, everyone there that is going to factor into that decision on who the quarterback is that they want to take. And if they're not as high on Drake May as we think they probably are, and they came out of Friday going, you know, we're kind of on the fence between May and McCarthy. And since we're on the fence, we have an opportunity to trade back just a few picks. We can take McCarthy and get another second rounder and address tackle and receiver right then and there. That may be a better situation for them to rebuild quickly than going with May at third overall or going with Daniels if he slips to third overall. And then they can get that X receiver. Or, or perhaps you got two of these second rounders. You trade one of them, trade back into the first round, and then you can get... Robinson out of LSU, who some consider almost as good, if not better, than Malik Neighbors, has the size, is probably a better fit at that X role. He's not, Neighbors seems like he'd be better more in the slot. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, Neighbors may be the best receiver in this draft, even better than Harrison, a lot of people say. But Robinson really fulfills that size role that they want. Or maybe you get A.D. Mitchell out of Texas, who's probably going between 20 and 30 in the first round. You trade back in there to a team that is, you know, a, a, was a playoff team this past season, they're, they're fine taking future draft picks because they're, they're happy with their receiving core or they're happy building for the future knowing guys' um, contracts will be ending after this next season. And they're willing to, to have the Patriots trade up and then take some future draft picks from New England. And then you can keep some of these 
second round picks that you acquired by trading back just slightly in the first round and still getting J.J. McCarthy. A lot of different things the Patriots can do here. It really depends how much they love Drake May, how much they love J.J. McCarthy. If they fell in love with him on Friday, which a lot of people in X did, watching some of the highlights coming out of his pro day, that would give the Patriots an opportunity to really stockpile some picks. And there's a lot of places you can hit in the first two rounds of this draft, even the third round of this draft. And you can address receiver, tackle, quarterback, and still have another pick in the third round. Maybe you address receiver again, and then you have some insurance there that, hey, maybe one of these guys will be the X, and the other guy will be a depth piece that we can develop a little bit more. It's a deep draft at all three of those positions, quarterback, tackle, receiver. A lot of ways you could slice it. I know we've all been talking about the Patriots trading back with the Vikings, getting 11 and 23, but let's look a little bit more into trading back just a few picks if they really want J.J. McCarthy. And one of these teams in the middle of the top 10 really likes Drake May. There is an opportunity there to swap those picks, get the quarterback you want, and then still able to get one or two really good receivers or one of the top tackles. It is an interesting idea. We'll see how it plays out. But as of right now, I still bet on Drake May. I still bet on the Patriots staying at number three overall. But when you hear Gerard Mayo saying, we have to fall in love with the guy, drafting a QB at number three is the priority. But if we're not in love with the guy, all options are still on the table. Going to be interesting to see what happens here. Uh, We'll be back next week with more Patriots coverage here on Pat's Cast. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, or subscribe if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you kind of buying in to the J.J. McCarthy hype? Are you more on the Drake May train? Do you think he's a guy you should take just because he has so much upside? Do you want them to trade back even farther with the Vikings and stockpile picks that way and then rebuild quicker without really prioritizing the quarterback position? Let me know in the comments below whether you agree, disagree. Love to hear from you, and we'll be back with more Patriots coverage this week.